added pot, alcohol, hash, hash oil, uh, THC, LSD, PCP, crystal meth. Ups and downs. I did acid. I did PCP, and I did hash. <laughs> How many of you guys started getting high at 16 or under? Okay, 15 and under, 14 and under, 13 and under, 12 and under, 11, 10. <laughs> How many of you got high with a teacher or some other school personnel? Okay, how many of you got high while you were babysitting? How many of you got the kids high that you were babysitting with? How many of you got high in church? Sure, man. Get it away from me, man. This is no good. Get me another one. I still Bobby. I'm 12 years old. I started doing drugs in the fifth grade. Start with your hands up for me. Come on. No, no, no. Ricky! I haven't done anything. Let me out of here, please. Please. Oh, call me. No. No. What's your name, honey? I haven't done anything. I want to go home. Come on, what's your name? I want to go home. Let's see if she's got a wallet. Let go. Let go of me. Hold still. Come I on. I want my daddy. Come on. Hold still. Give me blood in the urine. Use a catheter if you have to. Give me a picture of her skull. Your daughter's in holding room B, Dr. Bauer. Hello, Mrs. Hello. Bauer. Any internal bleeding? No. X-rays? Negative. Susan? Honey, it's me. Sweetheart. I feel awful. I know. I don't remember anything. You're all right. That's the important thing. I feel so bad about it, Daddy. I just want to go home. Daddy knows. Electrolytes normal, everything normal. Epicac, 30 cc's. What's that about? Can I see you outside a minute? I had to clean her out, Frank. What for? She was bombed out of her skull. Art, she's never had a drink in her life. It wasn't just booze. She was loaded with methadrine. They all were alcohol and speed. I don't believe this. You can check with the lab. There's not even a question. They were spun out on it. How are the others? 
The ones in the back seat got it. Smashed pelvis. The girl, I don't know, we're trying to stabilize. The kid who's driving's okay. He's down there waiting with a couple of cops in case you're thinking of paying your respects. Can I take her home? Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Frank. Let me give her a shot of diazepam. Sorry. Sorry. It's terrible, Frank. Mixed methadone and alcohol, you're flying into a mountain. I don't understand it. I don't believe it. We're going to the movies, just the two of them. Susan and Lisa, the Powells are supposed to drive her home. She shouldn't even know those boys. She'd never do a thing like this. How you doing back there, Possum? Okay. What kind of sandwiches did your mother make? Tuna salad, egg salad, ham and cheese. Gonna be that long a talk, huh? You get egg for tuna. Mom puts too much relish in the tuna. Mom makes you tuna all the time. Why don't you tell her? I don't want to hurt her feelings. I guess that sort of opened things, didn't it? How do I start, sweetheart? You're the daddy. I just don't get it. Well, we were walking to the movies, and these two boys came by in this car. Two boys? We knew them, sort of. I mean, we'd seen them at school. And they said they'd drive us to the movies. OK. They had beer in the car. Just beer? And this stuff. Did you know what it was? Well, I remember they just said, try it. And I did. It was methadrine. Speed? You didn't know. It was speed? They just said to take it and it'd be OK. I, I didn't know what it was. I thought you had more sense than that. I know you did, Daddy. Have you ever done anything like that before? No. At school, this girl gave me a couple tokes on her marijuana once in the girls' room. I did that once. I know you know kids that mess with drugs. My friends don't. She wasn't a friend. Well, 
awful sorry, Daddy. I know how it makes you feel, and that's the worst part. What do you want me to do? Well, I guess you just can't forget it. But I'll never do it again. I'm not going to punish you, sweetheart. I never had to. You're too bright. So awful. I felt so scared. I don't know why kids do it. Eat your mother's, uh... Tuna? Tuna. Five minutes. I don't get up. You know what I need, not the Jocelyn's. Oh, do you believe it? Thank God that's over. I don't believe it. What? I don't believe what she said. What are you talking about? I don't believe that it was the first time she took drugs. Frank, please, just don't do this. We'll talk about it later. I mean, it was the first time she took... What are you doing? What are you doing? This is her room. You have no right to go through her things. You're making a fool of yourself. There's nothing there. Are you satisfied now? You didn't find a thing. I'm not going to watch this. Just stop it. Stop it. Do you hear me? There. She told you. Helen, you do not the first time end up in a car with two spaced out bums on alcohol and not to drink. I'm not going to listen to Stop it! Stop yelling! Oh, my fault. I should have told you. She could have died. What do you mean? This is the speaker. Care to explain this? They're not mine. I was just holding them for somebody. Who? Was it Marcy? I'm not going to tell my friends. I always said I didn't like that girl. I thought none of your friends used drugs. Well, it's just this girl. She's not really a friend. Friend or no friend, you're not doing her any favors. She's lying. I'm not lying. Daddy, I'm telling the truth. How much of this stuff do you take? Frank, she said she doesn't use it. I was trying to be honest with you, Daddy. You always say, Susan, be honest. Be honest. Well, look what it gets me. I am talking about this. Okay, I did try pot a couple times. Just to see what it was like. Kids smoke pot all the time. What's the big deal? Quaaludes, crystal meth, morphine? It isn't mine. Whatever she said, she lied. See. Daddy, please believe me. See what she's done? We're a family, together in everything we always have been. We've always talked about things. You don't believe anything I say. Why should I talk to you? Susan! You go to school. The bus drops you off at the corner at 4 o'clock. I want you inside this house at five minutes after. Nobody comes over. You don't go out. We're going to stop this right now. You're grounded. That's not fair. Mom. Go to your room. I hope you're happy, you little liar. <laughs> Kelly? 
How doing, Possum? Not so terrific. I didn't mean to get her in trouble. Would it help if I told you we love you very much? And Susan, too. Why'd she do it? All that stuff. That's not for you to worry. Possums don't worry. You're too old for that possum stuff, huh? I don't know why she did it. But it's not gonna happen anymore. Honest, I am. You'll get over it. No, I mean it. Daddy's little girl. All to yourself now, huh? That's not what I did. Sure, I got on everybody's crap list just by being there. I only wanted to make... To hell with it. What time are you getting home from school? Look, I'm not gonna do it anymore, okay? That's what everybody wants to know, isn't it? Okay, I'm not. <laughs> and we flipped. All right. Schwartz is having a party. Yeah, it's Pastor yeah. in Houston. He's got the house. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. Some great coke. My dad grounded me. Oh. No problem. It's at 10 a.m. Yeah, come on. You're not going to spoil the party, are you? Come on, Susan. No way. Come on. Susan. All right. Come it's going to be so fun. Bye. We hope you fun. She's a pink lady on Mondays, remember? Hey, join the party. Oh, that's okay. It's a rare opportunity. Man. I'll pass. <laughs> She's scared. I'm not scared. It's a real treat, man. What is it? Just a joint. <laughs> Dipped in a little dust. I don't want it. <clears throat> Am I freaking out? Am I going crazy? No. This feels good. Try it. I tried it. I didn't like Look, it. All you're gonna feel is good, okay? Maybe a year from now. Give me the joint, man. Please, I don't want Look, nothing's to. Nothing's gonna happen, okay? It's no big deal. Susan, help me! Susan, stop! You relax. Stop it. Nothing, all right? No. Believe me. Susan, help me! Stop it! You relax. Okay? Nothing. Leave her alone. What's the matter with you, man? Get out! Get out! You're blowing it, man. Just get out of there. Who do you think you are? I don't care. I don't care about anything. Just get out of here. You're nothing. Get out of here. You're nothing. Get out. 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 You little creep. You ratted on me. I don't care. I don't care what you say or how many times. You know what you've done? Mom cried herself to sleep at night. They were fighting. I heard them. I hate you. I don't care. I'm gonna get telling on you until you stop. You've got to keep your mouth shut. No. Say it. Say it! No! Oh. Say it! No! Oh. Say it! No! Oh. Oh. 
Tully. You all right? You all right? Come on, Kelly. Please get up. I'll get you something. I'll get you something. I'm sorry. It's not your fault. I'm sorry. Jungle Jim. I called Dottie Horgan. Kelly was fine when she drove her home this afternoon. It's a very simple question, Mr. Crockett. My daughter's getting drugged. She's getting them here because there's no place else she could get them. Why is this happening? You're putting it in very offensive terms, Dr. Bauer. Bauer. That's the question. If you would yield the floor, Dr. Bauer. Frank, why don't you let Mr. Crockett talk? I have 3,000 students in this school whom I am licensed to educate. I'm talking about drugs, Mr. Crockett, right here in your school. I cannot police Excuse their... Excuse me. My daughter is here for an education, Mr. Crockett. Not to run around with a bunch of potheads. Mrs. Bauer, when was the last time you saw Susan's report card? Uh, one, two months. She always does well, B's, B plus, and she's a good student. Straight F's. Uh, no, you, you must be mistaken. I'm sorry. I saw it. It's simple to make an F into a B. Irregular attendance for the past 12 weeks. Mrs. Bauer. Your daughter has not been to class for a month. Now let's understand. A young adult, or a child turning into a young adult, which is what Susan is, is going to pull against constraints that would keep her a child. Now, where do these constraints come from? Her parents, clearly. The tighter those constraints are, the more that budding adult mechanism within her will rebel against them, which is natural. So we're talking about a natural rebellion. Parents have to understand that rebellion. Giving a child the freedom to become an adult is very difficult for most parents. It means letting go. Drugs are, as we know it, in this culture, a very accessible mode of rebellion, but lessen the constraints on the child. You lessen the need for rebellion, and so the need for drugs. Am I clear? Dr. Gramley, are you going to sit there and tell me that I've got some kind of chokehold on my daughter? That's an interesting phrase. It was a thought. Was it? A figure of speech. Why did you say it, do you suppose? A thought, damn it. It was only a thought. I don't control or constrain. So, what do you say, Dad? <clears throat> Could we maybe just loosen the reins a little? She's never been that seriously involved in drugs. Talk to her. Honey. If that's all it takes, I mean, I know we've had some arguments about dating, but we can certainly sit down and discuss, can't we, Frank? But what about school? Yes, 
Who has had such pride? What about school, Susan? Well, I, I would, I'd want to. Talk to him. Okay, well, I was thinking, I've had a lot of problems this year. And I don't like any of my teachers, but I can do the work. You know I can. And I was thinking maybe someday I could go to medical school, so you'd be proud of me. Can't ask for better than that, can we, Dad? Susan? Detective Allison, please. Hello, it's Frank Bauer. I know I called just an hour ago, but I was hoping... Yes, we'll be here all evening. Please. Helen. Look at this mess. They deal with this all the time. They'll find her. Side of the road someplace. Face down. A ditch. It's been two days. Come on, Helen. Why? How could this happen? I'm here for the children. I don't go running around at the club someplace like everybody else. I take care of them. I listen to them. She's probably staying in a girlfriend's house. You know how these kids protect each other. Why not the way you've bullied her? What are we getting at here? 
She tried to explain things to you. She was lying. She was hurt. You hurt her. That's a rotten thing to say. If you hadn't followed her... She was running away! Not from me! If you've got an accusation to make, damn it, make it! All I know is, none of this happened until you turned this house into a prison. I will not be had, Helen, not by her, not by you. If I ever catch you around my daughter again, I'll kill you. Susan, come here. I want to talk to you. Susan, where have you been? None of your business. Don't you talk to your mother like that. Right, stop it. It's a private school. We were talking, sweetheart, and we think it might be a good idea if you got away for a while. You mean live there? Well, uh, you wouldn't have to, only if you like it. I don't want a girls' school. Well, it's not a girls' school. It's boys and girls. I'd cancel my appointments for the rest of the day. I thought we'd just drive over and take a look. I'll look. With C. Dr. Royce will be right with you. Thank you. Dr. Baum. Chris Rice. Doctor, my wife, Helen. Hello. Hello. This is my daughter, Susan. Hi, Susan. Hi, Susan. I'm Jean. Hi. I'm Wendy. We're druggies, too. What is this? Where am I? What do you mean, druggies, too? I'm no druggie. Sweetheart, we had no alternative. It's a place, a treatment program for kids on drugs. All I've ever done is, is pot and stuff. I'm not crazy. I can handle it. You don't even know what's real anymore. I do. Daddy, I know. I know what's real. I'll go to school. Honest. I'll go tomorrow. You can take me. You can call and see. Honest, Daddy, please. It's because we love you. We can't let you do things to keep on hurting yourself anymore. You can't make me. I haven't done anything wrong. The message is, you've screwed up your life, Susan. Badly enough that your parents here finally said, hey, no more. You've blown your family.
your school, your ability to walk around free, the privilege of people trusting you. So someone else is going to be in charge of you now, another young person. A druggie, just like you, but someone who's far enough along in her program to have earned some of those rights back, especially the right to be trusted enough to be responsible for herself. Now, Wendy's going to be responsible for you until you start to look at what drugs have done to your life. You will go nowhere unless she leads you, until you start to reconstruct your life, your ability to control yourself and relate to family and school and other things. I'll kill myself. I swear I will. Susan. I never want to see you again. I hate you. I hope you die. I'll run the first chance I get. You guys can't keep me here. No one can. We've been too permissive, I think. I'm not blaming. I'm getting at the core. If something else is upsetting your wife, Dr. Bowen. Uh, well, you, this business you said in there about um, another girl leading her places. By the forearm. What are those girls? Wendy. Why? To let her know that she's not trusted, that her life is out of control, and that someone cares. I'd like to make one thing clear right away. I don't want anybody, under any circumstances, using physical restraint on our daughter. She's not a bad child. She's just got some problems. Look, she doesn't do hard drugs. She's going through some kind of adolescent rebellion. Then take her. What are you talking about? You have the answers. You don't need us. I think I know what's right. How far has it gotten you? Look, kids got your daughter into drugs, Dr. Bauer. I mean, they're the ones that said, here, try this. I mean, they know all the tricks, all the lies she does, the conning, the denial. Now, the kids that work here have all been there themselves, and they're the only ones that can get her out of it. Look, if you're not able to turn her loose, to let go, maybe, maybe you're not. You're going to be absolutely powerless over what happens here. Just as powerless as you have been. Now, if you can't accept that, and the fact that we are here to help her, and you, go on out and take your daughter home. No talking during meetings unless you're asked to speak. No fighting or shoving. No answering or making telephone calls. No cosmetics of any kind. No television or radio, no magazines, no jewelry or belts. No chewing gum or candy, no profanity or obscene gestures, and no visitors without prior permission. right now. Do you feel good? Empty. Do you like that feeling? No. No, I feel like a piece of crap all the time. And I, I don't know how to stop it. This is Susan Bauer. She says she's done alcohol and pot. She's 15. Does anybody know her? Kara. I've seen her in school. She's done a lot more than pot and alcohol. I've seen her do LSD, PCP, crystal meth, and mushrooms. What's the first rule we learn in your group? Be honest. Okay, Arnie, make a start. Just do it right now, for once and for all. Stop feeling like crap all the time. 
start to feel good about yourself. You can do it. I feel... What? I feel angry. That's easy. Feeling angry is easy. I feel embarrassed. That's a cop out. All right, I'm scared. Okay. Of what? I feel worse now than when I was a druggie. Arnie, you ran away from here. You went back to getting high. Is that why you did it? So you wouldn't feel bad? I felt like crap when I went back. Okay. Arnie, you need to get honest with yourself. Make a decision to do something about that. If you think you're the only one with these feelings, you're wrong. Who wants to give Arnie a start right now? Sit down. Love you, Arnie. Kevin? Hi, Mom. This is Susan Bauer. She's my beginner. Hello, Susan. She's a real garbage head. Get in front, dear. Those nails weren't put there for you, Susan. They've been there a while. I'm not going to talk to you. You feel all your supports are gone, don't you? That you're at everyone's mercy. We've been through it all in this house. We understand. We're going to try to help you understand, too. We want to. Night, baby. Night, Susan. First-time parents, what we're essentially going to do here tonight is bear our souls to you. We do this every Tuesday and Saturday nights. As parents, you're required to be here just as much as your child is. Part of getting well for both of you is being able to talk about what drugs have done to your lives, the behavior it created, the trouble it got you into, and the really gut-tearing, bad feelings that these kids still have. Now, to do this alone would be impossible. So we require that every kid that's here for a week, at least, stand up before the staff, before his peers, before her parents, and tell his or her story. 
In return, we ask that what is said here, what is done here, stay here. My name is Linda. I'm 16 years old. Uh, the drugs I have done are uh, alcohol, pot, uh, tick, PCP, LSD, uh, cocaine, uppers, downers, prescriptions, uh, heroin. Uh, I've been in the program for 11 days, and uh, I used drugs for four years. Um, talk about your past. Uh, my past, um, uh, I'd shoot up, you know, every day, a couple times a day. Uh, it's what, it costs a lot, so, um, I turn tricks. Uh, three or four tricks a day, so I get enough money to get high. You know, I'd, I'd start feeling real bad. So, um, so that would be what I do. Okay, this it's real hard to talk about because my mom and everything. She believed me, and I lied to her. About a month ago, I told her I was going to spend the night with a girlfriend. But instead, um, my boyfriend and I, we need to get high real bad, so, um, so we robbed this all night market. I don't know what to do. It's hard. You frightened? Where your drugs have got you, Linda. Turn around. Excuse me? I said turn around. Now, probably you don't think that you belong here. But this is the best place that you could be, Linda. Just look at all those kids that care about you. They've been there. We made a decision. Which one? You made ten. That girl's a prostitute. You heard her admit it. My God, did you see the look on Susan's face? She's learning what it can lead to. Shooting up? Robbery? You're going to leave her with people like that? For a couple of weeks. She doesn't belong there. I want her out. I was yelling at my dad. I was screaming at him. I was cussing him out and everything. I remember him saying, Carol, come back. Don't leave like this. My parents were always afraid something terrible would happen to me. They saw this dead look in my eyes. That I was going to end up dead, too. I used to think how my dad would feel if he had to come and see me dead. And he had to identify my body. Wait, wait, hold on. 
Are you laughing? Stand up a minute. Why are you laughing? Where are you with this? I think it's stupid. Um, Wendy. You laugh at me. Come on. You know, I'm sick of you. I really am. Ever since you've been here, all you do is sit there like you're so smart and we're all out of it. Well, you're the one that's out of it. The chick's cool, you guys. The girl's been around. I don't care what you say. Uh, Tina. I can't believe you. You think you're real hot stuff, don't you? I'm not like you, okay? Sure, I do drugs, but I can handle it. I'm not out there in the gutter. Look, let me tell you something. You don't come here to play games, okay? She's thinking, who the hell are you to tell me? She's going, who do you think you are? This is your life. This is everybody's life in here. You don't come here to screw around. Would you look at her when she talks to you? We're sick of your crap, and we're not going to put up with it anymore, because all you are is a hurting little girl. You're just a hurting little druggie, just like the rest of us. I care about you. I really do. You may not know that right now. I don't know what to do. I, I don't think you care about yourself. Okay, let's wrap it up now. One more. Uh, Wendy. Look, I know you have feelings, because I've heard you cry in bed at night. And it would really help you if you just admit it. Just say what you felt. I was scared to talk about my feelings, too. The things you did in your past, okay, we all did a lot of bad things. But I finally talked about them. I said what I felt. I did it because I'd rather do that than keep it all inside. I know how bad it hurts you, Susan. Carol Hughes. I feel good about her. What'd she ask me? She's asking to go home. She's really opening up to the group and sharing her feelings. Her face is really starting to soften up, too. And her eyes look good. Yeah. Well, how did the group vote? Home. Home for Carol Hughes? Yeah. Yeah, she's oh, easy. All right. <laughs> Susan Bauer. She won't talk. She won't share anything. She won't assume responsibility for anything she's done. She thinks it's all a big joke. Well, it's an act. She's scared to death. Her father called. He wants to see me after the meeting tonight. He wants to terminate her, gang. Oh, no. She's trying to get pulled out of the program. I watched her. She was just working her parents over the other night. Well, she's scheduled to give her testimony tonight, isn't she? I don't think she'll do it. Yeah? Well, I think she's ready to talk. My name's Susan. I'm 15 years old. I've been here 12 days. The drugs I've done, I've done alcohol and pot. Do you want to do this again next Saturday? No. Get honest. OK. I did LSD once and speed, sort of, which I did for two months. Turn around. Turn around, I said. Turn around and tell them. And PCP. Oh, cocaine sometimes. Moods, uppers, downers, prescriptions, opium, hash. I never shot up. Once. A couple times. How many years have you been doing drugs, Susan? Three. And what does that make you? A druggie. Okay, go ahead. 
I, I started taking drugs. I started... Well, I wanted to be in with the older kids. Um, I wanted the guys to like me, you know? I, I didn't want to be left out of things. And where'd you get your drugs, Susan? School, mostly. Shopping mall, record store. Anywhere. They're everywhere. Talk about the past. Um, okay, this is really hard. My, this, my, my folks don't know. About, um, it's... One time... I got pregnant and I had this abortion. And I was, I was too scared to tell him. So, um, Ricky, he's this guy I'd known for a couple years. And I broke into this house and stole stuff to get money for the abortion. I thought a lot of times I, I wanted to kill myself. You know, I, I'd be riding along and I, I just wanted to run to the cars coming head on. You know, sometimes I just scream into my pillow at night. I thought I was going crazy. <laughs> oh, I had the abortion. I don't know how my parents never found out. My dad's a doctor and stuff. Um, I said about the stealing we did. About that. Um, a lot of things I did, you know. We break into places, empty houses sometimes, boats. When my folks thought I was in school, which I wasn't. I, I stole my dad's prescription pads once. And, and Ricky used it to get drugs for us. Is that about it? Yeah. Okay. Love, <laughs> Eddie, your brother is graduating tonight, and we can't be there. We're here in a drug rehab because of you. And I am angry about what you have done to this family. I love you. You've been here 60 days now, and you haven't done a single thing to help yourself. Well, let me tell you one thing. We'll sit here just as long as you will. Because we're not going to give up on you, even if you have given up on yourself. I love you, son. Love you, Mom. Love you, Dad. Love you, Eddie! I thought I couldn't understand you, Michelle. That all teenagers acted like you. You were high, right under my nose. And I didn't know it. I do love you, Michelle. And I want you home. I love you, Mom. Love you, Michelle. What you've been putting us through here? Um, I've been praying, and uh, I'm still waiting for some answers. If you belly up on this program again, you stay out of my sight. I don't want to see you again. Honey, we're very proud of you. Uh, we know you've worked hard. We have two. Daddy, I'm coming home. Susan, I love you. 
Honey, we're gonna get you home. I love you. I was really scared when you and your friends did all that stuff. I thought you didn't love us anymore. I want you to come home. I miss you. I love you, Susan. Look, if you don't want to do well, this... No, no, it's... Just, it should be good for a change. Charlie's always good for a change. Let's just not have any big discussions. Let's just have a good time. What do you do? Charlie. The man's a doctor. Who else do I talk to? I'm a novice at this. I've never been high on, on pot or any kind of pill or anything. But this is all I ever touch. You know what he did? He took five um, micro uh, somethings. Micro dots. That's acid, hallucinogens. So, how's Susan liking her new school? Well, she's settling in, of course. Uh, Charlie said something about Virginia and horses. Well, you know how she always liked to ride. Oh. What's she doing? Still straight A's? B pluses. B pluses. What have we done? What exactly have we done? Tell me, you're a knowledgeable, articulate guy. I have a child, you have a child. I'm not going to talk about it. We've always been so crazy about Susan. I hit him. I, I was choking him and throwing him around. Can you imagine being so angry at your kid that you'd do a thing like that? No, I can't. I mean, what have we got here? This happens in the ghettos. Excuse me. I better see if she's okay. Having fun? Yes, are you? Sure. Is something wrong? What could be wrong? Then everything's fine? Do you do that on purpose, or is it just some sort of knee-jerk reaction? To what? That holier-than-thou act of yours. I think we better be going. You do? Don't you? Why don't you just admit it? I'm gonna get the car. No, I want to finish this. Finish what? Well, you started here. I started? What did I start? The perfect father. Fights, drugs, oh, no, you couldn't imagine that. B pluses, horses. Listen, if you're going to quote me, damn it, you know damn well that when they come... Our daughter's behind four walls, a druggie, and you stand there with... I didn't get here by myself. I had a lot of help. And if I'm not the perfect wife, I'm not the perfect mother, well, I'm sorry, I just don't fit your storybook picture. Talk about the places you hid your drugs. Tina? I used to hide them behind the posters in my room. <laughs> and I'd hide them in my parents' closet. <laughs> like in my mom's winter coat during the summertime. <laughs> and in the bottom of the dental floss. And I'd sew them inside my stuffed animals. <laughs> I even hid them in my grandmother's car. <laughs> Are you going to make amends or not?
She's going, you can't get to me. I'm going to beat you suckers. <laughs> Susan, why don't you explain to the group how stupid they all are? <laughs> I want to be left alone. <laughs> Where do you want to go? I don't know. I don't care. Anywhere away from here. You're wasting a lot of time with this big, tough act. Uh, aren't you tired of it? Look, Susan, why don't you just get honest with yourself and start working? I don't even want to talk to you. Sit down. Hi, hon. Hi, Susan. Hi, Mom. I mean, I was like you. I was worse. I'd been in detention centers, in lockups. I was going to court. My folks almost got a divorce because of me. My father stayed at work all the time and went out of town on business so he wouldn't have to hear about it. And my mother took up for everything I did. I never wanted to be just anybody. I mean, I wanted to be somebody special. And that's when I knew I had to change. Now, I know you can do it. What happened? What do you mean, nothing, nothing? You know nothing. Find out something. Hospital? She's run away. Mr. Sutter? Mr. Sutter? I'm Frank Bauer. I want to talk to you, please, about my daughter. Well, who are you? What is it? I'm Susan Bauer's father. The night they picked up your son down at the marina, he was with my daughter. I don't want to hear anything about this. Please, Mr. Sutter, she's run away. My daughter, my Susan, I'm trying to find her. Your son could know where she is. I don't want that boy around here. Please, sir. I don't want him back here. Mr. Sutter! I try to think how she'd think. Go where she'd go. Maybe the school. Maybe when school opens at 8 o'clock, I'll, I'll drive around the school. Screamed at Kelly. Why? I don't know why. 
Oh, for God's sake, Helen. I said a few things. I don't want to hear this. She said a few things. I don't even know what. Give me help, Helen. Not another problem. That's what it is, Frank. What? There's no Dr. Magic. Not this time. Daddy! Phone! Hello. Where is she? That's liquid cocaine. That's triple script stuff you're talking about. There's a government form for those drugs. I can't. No, no, don't. Don't. All right, I'll do it. I'll get them. I'll need time. Where? Eight o'clock tonight, I'll be there. Only. He'll tell me where she is. He wants drugs. You do. Get out of here, man. We got nothing more to talk about. Hey, I can walk away from this too, you know. I don't need your garbage. The street to forward, okay? Every corner. Every corner. All right, man. Your way. Come on. to go back. We're going home. I hate it! I hate it! You don't ever have to go back there. Hey, tell me something. Oh, yeah. Have fun. They taught me. I know, sweetheart. Honestly, Daddy. Mom's got your room ready and dinner. We'll go to school. We'll talk about everything. It's a terrible place there, Daddy. It's all over, sweetheart. Take you back again and again, as many times as it takes. I'll never forgive you for this. As long as I live. Never. Look at you. You look awful. Your eyes are dark and sunken. Now, do you want to talk about it? What's your problem, Susan? I just want to leave here. You left. You went back to your druggy boyfriend. Was he as good as all that? I never want to see him again. Oh, feeling sorry for yourself. I don't know what you want. I want you to get off your butt, Susan. 
I'm getting tired of it, aren't you? Now, what do you feel, scared? Well, okay. Okay. And how do you feel about that? Things I have to work on? What things? Like my independent attitude? Oh. Okay, like making amends. You're a cop-out, Susan Bauer. That's Pat Bull. Now, why don't you get on it? I am. What are you telling us? A bunch of stuff we already know? That's what you said. We want your feelings. That is. That's what I want. No. What you want are your drugs. You live every day to get high, don't you? I don't. Well, I'm wondering. I don't. I don't want that. I don't want my past. I want something out of my life. I'm scared. I'm scared. I don't want to go back again. So I'm, I'm scared to go on. I want... Talk is cheap. I hope you mean it. I don't want to run again. I'm afraid to look back. So you take one step at a time because each step is a scary step. Come on down and sit in front. So what was the first thing you felt after she split? Well, the first thing... The first thing when she split. The very first thing when I got the phone call from staff. I felt very disappointed. That was the very first feeling I had. I don't want to hear this crap. Okay, what? I mean, you wrapped your child up and you brought her back here and you weren't disappointed. Well, I was, though. I had some negative feelings about what goes on here. Come on, who are you trying to kid? I was there, remember? You came in with a set of demands. I came in with a set of questions. No, no, uh-uh. What's the first rule? Be honest. Yay. Well, the reason I came in... I don't want to hear the damn reason. Okay, well, uh... You came in, you were furious. Not disappointed, not negative feelings. You were enraged. You were all over the place, okay? All right, now. Why? I felt humiliated. What else? I know what you're trying to get me to say. That my biggest thing that... that I'm powerless over my own kid. No. You already admitted that, otherwise you wouldn't have brought her back here. I think what you really don't want to say is that it's all your fault she's a druggie. To a degree, it is my fault. I'm a doctor, I should have known. <laughs> No, that's true. I may be here, Felt. It was all your fault when you brought your druggy kid in. How many of you had a psychologist or a family counselor or a psychiatrist tell you that it was your fault, that your kid was just going through normal adolescence and that you were just being too strict? How many of you believed that you screwed up your druggy kid's whole life? That you were a failure as a parent? You, a doctor, Dr. Bauer, a successful surgeon who worked so hard to give his family a good life, how could you have failed at this? Well, it's not your fault. You didn't make your child take drugs. That's something she decided to do on her own. What, did you twist her arm, make her take a puff off a joint? How many of you felt so guilty that you just wanted to run away? How many of you felt like you're going crazy? All right. I, I don't think when you brought your boy in here, you were ready to turn him loose. Or her loose, I'm sorry. Um, 
I don't think you were ready. You know, when I, when I brought mine in, uh, I felt just like you. <laughs> you know, I'm a cop. No way I couldn't handle a kid on drugs. I wasn't alone in that. I mean, we got guys in here. Uh, we got a man in here who's in the Air Force, a colonel, heads a squadron. Lawyers' kids, preachers' kids. Hell, we even got a shrink's kid. I learned. Took a damn while. But uh, I gave my boy to him, to the program. There wasn't a damn thing I could do with him. And I just don't think you're ready to admit that. See, our problem is not our kids alone. Our problem is how we relate to our kids, our needs, our attitudes, our feelings. Now, we can sit in this room and talk about our kids until we're blue in the face. We gotta give in. Start talking about ourselves. Because we're sick too. We haven't got the disease of drugs. We've got the disease of people who are powerless over their feelings for somebody else on drugs. And that's where we got to take care of business. Um, my name is Helen, and um, well, I, I come here twice a week, and well, for two months now, and I watch my daughter, and I listen to you, to everyone, talk, and then I go home, and it's peaceful. I feel numb, and I like it. I dread her coming home. I read the, you know, starting up again, and I, I don't know, if the anger and the screaming and pain and the guilt, my guilt. And when I think about it, sometimes I wonder what it would be like if she never came home. She just didn't exist anymore. Look, these feelings are not abnormal. A person who's chemically dependent makes the home a place of lunacy. Helen? What a day. That is my last strangulated hernia. You know what Larry Roberts said today? What? Hey. Where's that look? Where the heart jumps a beat when I walk in. Lost my touch? If anyone had told me five years ago that I'd be standing in a room someplace in front of a lot of strangers, Talking about my daughter's drug problems. I know. I know. Twice a week, we pile into a car and drive 40 miles to listen to a bunch of crazies. You'd be nice, Frank. I am not going to stand up in front of 200 people, Helen. My gosh, I'm just not good at this. Nobody's good at this, Frank. It's not the point. Do you want rice or potatoes, chicken? Rice. I'm a surgeon. If something's wrong, you cut it out. And if your car breaks down, you fix it. This isn't a car, Frank. It's our daughter. It's a program. We don't even know if it works. Yes. Do you understand? No. Not yet.
I love you, Susan. You've been dying on me, Susan. I've done everything I know how to do. You're farther away. What is it I can do? Tell Susan how you feel, Dad. Don't lecture or complain. Deal with your honest feelings. I love you, sister. When you were born, I knew that someday I'd have to give you up. Not like this. Not yet. Not now. You're 15. You're my child. I'm not ready to give you up. I want you home. I can't make that happen. Daddy can't make that happen. It's something you have to do for yourself. I really love you. I love you, Mom. I love you, Gilly. Susan, what are your feelings? What are you dealing with? <laughs> Can you guys help her out? Tina. We don't come near to getting your attitudes because you won't let us. You act like you don't want our help. Sit down. Somebody else? Sit down. All you're doing is copping out. You aren't working hard one bit. Come on, that's enough. You gotta get it out, Susan. It's hurting you inside. Just tell us your feelings. A lot of things I did go through, you know? Like, like I've just been going through. Like here, stuff, you know, like, like crap. A lot of times, I think, Okay, maybe I did screw up, and it's not that bad. But when I throw it up at myself... Get honest. Just get honest about it. Be I honest. feel so bad about it. I had it all together, and I screwed it up. And I didn't want to look at it. I, so, so I just conned my dad and stuff again, because he thought I was this neat little girl. And I was. I mean, we go sailing and, and do things, and, and we were always talking. I mean, we were friends, real friends. And I feel so bad because he didn't know. And it got worse, and I call my friends to get high. And I get stuff, you know, like you guys. I mean, I really thought I had it together. I didn't. My dad was always telling me how terrific I was, and I felt so bad inside, because I felt like I was nothing. And then I just do more drugs, because I, I felt so bad, and I didn't want those feelings. My dad, the look on his face, the day he knew I'd always been his little girl. <coughs> I heard him so I'd never seen tears in his eyes before. <coughs> Susan Bauer, 62 days in the program. She's asking to go home. Okay. How's she doing in group? There's some changes. She's made a start. Yeah, but she's still having trouble facing up. 
She's really trying. I see her trusting group more. I see her dealing with some very bad feelings. Is she ready to be trusted enough to go home? What about her parents? Her mother was wonderful the other night. Yeah, the father's struggling. Yeah, but they've really come a long way since they first came to the program. I mean, they were totally divided when they came here. As long as he understands that he's going to have to keep coming here while Susan's still in the program, which could be months, just the first step, gang. She's got six more to go. Okay. Vote decides it. Those for home. I'm angry, Pat. I'm angry. I got a wife who's been part of my life nine years before you ever came into this world. And I came home last night. Last night, and she's gone. She can't take it anymore. You've done that, son. Love you, Dad. Love you, Dad. Chris, I feel very, very relieved that you're here, that the police aren't coming around looking for you anymore, and that I can go to bed at night without crying myself to sleep. It may seem like hell, but you're alive. Thank God you're alive. I love you, Chris. Love my special mom. Love you, Chris! Susan, I thought the worst day of my life was the day I brought you here. Walking out that front door and leaving you with strangers. But now I know that the worst thing was admitting that you have a problem. A drug problem. And that I, as much as I love you, couldn't help you. I carried you home from the hospital and I thought I knew how to be a father. But I was just... Your mother and I were just not much more than kids ourselves. And uh, this crash course in fatherhood I know I'm going to be a good father to you now. I thought I could fix anything, but I couldn't. I thought other people's kids did drugs, not my kid. I let you get away with too much. I love you, sweetheart. I'm coming home! Yeah!